Okay, so welcome to the second video where we're going to be exploring Radiant, uh, the very sexy new Radiant. Um, I made a previous video of this, but I sounded like a kid in the candy shop because I was extremely happy with what Black Ops 3 has done. And I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent before we actually get into Radiant and actually show you guys a beautiful folder. They have provided documentation. This is beautiful. You have no idea how happy I was when I saw this folder. It's a Docs Mod Tools is in the root Black Ops 3 folder, and it has all of these things. They've even provided a plugin for Sublime Text. I think you guys have seen me use Sublime Text before. It's a great text editor. I love using it when I don't use Vim. Um, and they've provided plugins for it for actually to support syntax highlighting and such for the GSC scripting language that they have for. Uh, for the Call of Duty games. This is so amazing that they have added official support for that. They have all of these documentation files. None of these were to be found with World at War. People were just kind of thrown half-assed mod tools and said, here, make things. Uh, there was no documentation, really. Uh, there was a wiki up for a bit. I don't, I don't have, I have no idea what happened to that. Uh, but now we have all of these files, and look at this. Um, oh, you don't want to see that. This is what you want to see. They have keywords, they have operators, special tokens, the file types and what they mean, the preprocessor directives. It seems like they have a lot more now. Uh, as you can see with the keyword class, it looks like they have uh, like an object-oriented approach now in GSC, which I don't ever remember there being. There seems to be a lot more PPDs. There's documentation on the structure of how it works. They have namespaces. Uh, they have a keyword reference, operator reference. These this is what World at War really needed. These are amazing. There's images here, how images work, how you can press them, what the different things mean, um, Radiant Launcher, Quick Start, about all the things about uh, about the launcher. Like, this is insane how much, full, like, how full out they went here. I know it took a year for the mod tools to be released, but it was so worth it. They put the work in that needed to be put in, and this actually exceeds what my expectations were. Because if you guys remember when I announced these at first, I said they better provide documentation with these. And they have. And they've done a very adequate, they've done a, a very exceptional job at doing it. And my hat's off to Treyarch for this. This is amazing. Um... Yeah, this is this is really good. Anyway, this is Radiant. It's very sexy. Now, one thing you should know before even installing the mod tools, I think, I didn't know about it, uh, because when I actually opened Radiant at first, uh, my computer crashed. And that was because I had a lot of Chrome tabs open, and this is why. Actually, it's not using as much as it did before. But Radiant is using 4 gigabytes of RAM. I've had Radiant use 8 gigabytes of RAM before. It depends on what you're doing, I guess. But I have seen this memory usage go up to 8 gigabytes. That, that seems very high. Now, I know all of the resource-intensive things that it is doing. It kind of makes sense, but I think they might have a memory leak here. Because this is insane the amount of memory this uses. You do not want to open Google Chrome or have many tabs open with Google Chrome when you were using Radiant. I have one tab open and it's using 93 megabytes. That's how much Google Chrome sucks. But yeah, you definitely want to make sure you have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in your system before even trying to run this. If you have 8 gigabytes, I'd say forget it because you're probably going to blue screen at one point or another, especially if you have any other applications open other than Radiant. It's very resource intensive. Um, that being said, it's also a little bit laggy, especially in this game preview here. Uh, it's actually running a lot smoother than it did before. But yeah, so as you can see in Radiant, we've actually loaded up the Giant. Now this is another complaint that I had about the World at War mod tools, which they have fixed. It's beautiful. What they've done is they provided an actual map from the game, a tangible map that people have played, and you're actually able to edit it if you wanted to. You can change the giant to what you want uh, if you really wanted to do something like that, which is amazing. They should have done this right from the get-go. So you can explore around, you can see all of the rooms and how they've done things for reference for your own map in a map that's actually in the game, right? The giant. This is uh, this is super cool. I love this. Right? This is 
you can take away a lot from this. You can learn a lot just by exploring this map and clicking on different things and seeing how you, like how they work. Uh, this is this is really good. This is amazing. Good job, Treyarch, on that as well. Now the mod tools can be a little bit confusing at first. Now I'm happy to report though. They're very similar in controls to World at War. So if we go around, it's the same way of moving around as in World at War. You just right-click on the preview, and then you put your mouse around to move around. Um, the D and C keys are still used for moving up and down. The A and Z keys are still used for changing the angle. So, yeah, they, it's if you know the World at War mod tools, you're not going to have too hard of a time uh, getting these mod tools to work, which is very nice. Uh, it's it's very good that they did this, uh, that they stuck to the to the traditional. Um, but obviously there are a lot of changes, and it's actually changes for the better. I love this. Um, obviously you would expect some sort of change after about ten years. You know, Co Call of Duty is a copy paste game, but you would expect after ten years for at least something to change. These are amazing. Um, another thing about the mod tools, these are very stable. Uh, they have publishing right built in. Like, I can't really see us running into problems the same way we ran into on World at War, which is priceless. It's amazing. Now, if you want to filter these out, you just actually have to hit F on the preview, and it'll bring open this little window here. And over here, you can select what you want. So I've checked off volumes. Uh... Now, unchecking and checking things here, this can make it lag a little bit in resource intensive, uh, like how resource intensive it is. But if we had volumes, we would have all of these things. And to be honest, I can't even see when these things are on. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off. I recommend you do as well. You can you can you can filter anything you want here, similar to World at War. Uh, but it seems like there's a lot more options. So I'm going to actually change this to similar to what we see in World at War because I really liked the way it was laid out in World at War with the like the big grid here and then it had the the preview window because I don't need a preview window that takes up half my screen I doubt many of you do either so what I'm going to do is this XY top which you can actually open by going to view uh, I think I think it's view anyway I know I did have it okay layout I think it was and then XY top and then YZ XZ um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to the larger part and then I'm going to put the camera up in the in the corner, kind of like the way it was on World at War. This end of the info, now here's what I, what I don't know if I can do. Because I want to move these over to like here, I wonder if I can do that. But I don't want them to take up the entire bottom of the screen. See, I'm not, I'm not entirely familiar with this of how it works. And I'm wondering if I can move this over to the bottom part. Okay, that expands it across the entire screen. This is super annoying. Um, this has nothing to do with the mod tools. It's just the way that it's laid out. I just want these things to be under there and then have the grid go all the way down. I don't know if there's a way to do that. It would be very, very nice if I could. But here is the grid, and it looks very similar to what we've seen on the World at War. And it is very similar. In fact, if we go to a... Uh, I want to go to a blank space. That way we don't get an overlap here. Uh, we'll go outside the map here a little bit. So right out to here, for example. If we click and drag, recreate a brush. Look at that. It's beautiful. I'm not going to try to find it on here. That'll be too hard. But we can move it around. We can hit space to duplicate it the same as World at War. We hit backspace to delete it. We hit shift and click to select it. It's very similar to World at War. So it's not going to be too much of a learning curve for those who have followed my previous tutorial series and such. So I think I'm not going to cover that as much as I did in World at War because it's so similar and I have a feeling many of you that are watching this video have watched the World at War ones anyway. Um, what I'm wondering is control tab, does that Oh, it does. So control tab still also changes the view mode, too. Um, now, it is laggy, though, right? That's because we're dealing with a map with, like, millions of entities, right? We have so many things in this map because it's dairies. It's huge. Um, like, all these script nodes and stuff. So that's lag. So when we start our own map, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be a lot easier to work with. We're not going to have this cluster of crap all over the place. Um, 
So yeah, so that's an introduction to the mod tools a little bit. This is all we're going to really get into so far. As you can see in the Entity Browser, though, look at that. You can go to Actor, Zombie, and Zombie Dog Spawner. You can go to Funk. Uh, Funk doesn't really have anything. Misc, Model, Prefab, all that stuff is right here for you to just drag and drop into there, which is amazing. Um, so that is the basics of Radiant. And next, we are going to cover actually creating our first map. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you guys may have in the video. And subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video where we are making our own map.